I'll quickly improve the SEO of this pre-rendered Blazor brand website. I have made more in-depth videos about the SEO Blazor pre-rendering, so feel free to watch those if you have any unanswered questions after this video or use the comment section below. So I created a component called Meta Tags Layout where you see the Blazor page title and the head content. Those are the components you can use from Blazor to dynamically set the page title and meta tags. So these will end up in the head between the head tags. And this will be set as the title also in the head section. So I added the description tag, then some tags for the open graph, so Facebook. And then for Twitter, and then a canonical URL and the content language. I added parameters for these and then I'm setting some defaults. So then I set this on the index page. So to override any of the default values, of course, you just set the parameter yourself. So let's have a look at what that gives me. So I started the app. I did expose my local host temporarily to a yeah, publicly accessible one. Let me show you. I just did ngrock HTTP and then the link of my frontend application. And then it's going to expose that to a public endpoint. Let's see, don't worry about these errors. So we can inspect the head tags, the top, and see that the title is index brand and the description is set and all the other things are set as well. So that's good. If I now refresh, You'll see that the tags are already filled in thanks to the pre-rendering. So let's head over to a meta tags tester. So I'm going to have to copy in the new URL. Let's have a look. And then it should show me the preview in Google index slash brand. So the author, the link, the description the dummy image thumbnail for Twitter. So that's uh, those Twitter tags. And for Facebook, the OG tags and LinkedIn. I don't know if that uses the OG as well. Uh, so that seems decent. And let's now have a look at a more dynamically loaded page. So the blog detail page, for example and which will want to have meta tags set to the actual content of the blog post so the title the description maybe the image and the url of the blog post let's head over to the blog get blog post by slug i did add something because this description should yeah you'll likely want that to be plain text so otherwise there would be html tags or markdown tags in there so what i did is like i showed in previous video i added another property to the response dto and filled that with markdown to plain text so the body was markdown and now we have it as plain text so i should be able to access it and set that in the meta tags component. So in the brand website blog detail page, you see this data. So the context data contains the actual data of the blog post. Yeah, it's author.name. And let's then head over to blog post 13. We could also inspect page source to see that the pre-rendered 
meta tags are present and the body content is there as well. That's great. And then as a description, you see some truncated text, which is, and it's plain text, which is actually really good. Since the blog post contains some markdown, you don't want that in the meta tags, data tags. And we even see the URL to the blog post. So let's copy that into the So now we have post 13 brand and the Loem Ipsum page description. The image doesn't seem to be there and that's because I mistakenly added a point before the slash images. So that's not a good practice maybe. But yeah, that's in the seeded data. So, so pretty good, of course. Only unfortunate that the image link is broken. But as you can see, it doesn't really matter where I place that meta tags layout component since it will, of course, add the meta tags to the head. So what I sometimes do is add a hidden link. And why I do that is add on click events. This is not something that Google could pick up. And let's now add in a simple CAPTCHA, a simple I am human check. Since this is a dynamic Blazor WebAssembly form, I'm just going to add a simple I am human check. So simply an extra toggle. If you now press join, of course, you're going to get a validation error. And if you fill it in and you press join, and this is still isn't valid, it's not going to submit. So there is not that much risk of people abusing it or robots abusing it. So feel free to make this as challenging as you want. You could, for example, generate some random numbers and ask the user to click on the right one to verify that they aren't a robot. If I need to make this more challenging, I definitely will. But for now, this will suffice. I did upgrade the bootstrap version from 5.1 to 5.3 and replaced these files to have this reversed switch on the form. So I made a CAPTCHA layout on the implementation project and I added that to the index page. Well, let's go over the, this code first. So it has the same child content possibility and then to it's able to pass the value of the CAPTCHA to whatever component is the child content. And this will simply, so the is CAPTCHA completed value boolean is bound to this checkbox. So if it gets toggled, this value will be true or false. That's good. I added a random string just so you could add multiple on the same page. If you didn't, and these IDs would be identical between two toggles, then you might not know which one gets toggled. Yeah, might not be the correct one at least. So a pretty simple component. You could also just move this code directly onto the uh, form you want to implement it. So all I did here was on the newsletter subscription form. So the one you saw on the website, I added two parameters is CAPTCHA required and is CAPTCHA completed. And based on those, I'm going to disable or enable the submit button. That's, yeah, it's not ideal that I had to, that this component needs to know about another component. So you might as well, like I said, add it in this component, the whole CAPTCHA layout in there. 
but I wanted to reuse that on the later on for the contact form. So this is how I implement it. So you have the capture layout and then the child content is the newsletter subscription form. And then the capture required is set to true and the capture completed is the context value. So coming from that capture layout and that's all to do to make this work definitely let me know what you think about this is this too simple or is it even unnecessary let me know i think i once built that when i was uh, using razor pages where the form was a server-side rendered form and that form had a method of post, so you could actually pretty easily submit it or write some script to f yeah, submit often, I would say it like that. But since this is a uh, blazer, when I press join and everything worked fine, it will wait two seconds and then reset the form so all all of those dynamic elements uh, help yeah well make it harder for robots to force submit this form i hope that was enough information and next video we'll tackle the metrics module so definitely subscribe to follow next episodes as well See you in the next one.